How often do you put a compressor on something and even at the lowest threshold, it's already triggering? Or maybe you put an EQ on and it's already hitting the red in the meters. Are you struggling to hear the difference between compressors, EQ, saturation when they're on and off? Well, chances are you need to know what gain staging is. So stay tuned for more. Hey, what's up everybody? It's Fabio here from Noise. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at gain staging, a really, really important part of your production and engineering. If you're not sure what gain staging is, don't worry, we're gonna take a look at some examples throughout this video to help you understand and get better at mixing and mastering. Now, before we get started, remember to hit that like and subscribe button so I can bring you these videos twice a week. What did you guys think of the video on One Beat, One Synth? I just released it a few days ago. Would love to know what you think. And we're going to be covering more and more synths in a weird and wacky way so that any of you using hardware out there for your production can reconfigure it ever so slightly and try and make something sound a little bit more unique. So, gain staging, what's it all about? The first stage of gain staging is your source or input. So whether you're recording in via a microphone or you've loaded a VST synthesizer or instrument, that is your source, your input. Getting this level right is really important. Now, when you're recording in, you don't wanna to record too low and you don't wanna to record too high. The reason why you don't wanna to record too low is because if you do want to then boost the volume in the box, you start bringing up what's called floor noise level. Now, this was more prevalent in mixing consoles as analog gear tends to have a little bit of a hiss or a hum and less prevalent in newer, more modern interfaces, but it still exists. So getting the optimum level recording from your microphone or instrument is fundamental to making sure that we don't increase too much noise into our mixes, making things sound cleaner. On the other side of things, you don't want your signal being too hot. And what I mean by that is too loud because otherwise you're gonna get digital clipping. Now digital clipping is also bad. Why? Because it creates distortion. We don't want aliasing, we don't want distortion. It creates unnecessary problems and artifacts that we can just avoid by turning the gain down at the recording stage. These levels can be monitored directly on the level meter on whichever channel you're recording into. Ideally, you're probably looking for a peak level of about minus eight, minus 12 at the most. Now, if you're not recording with a microphone and you are using a VST instrument, this can also be problematic. I don't know why, 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 why? But modern synthesizers seem to want to crank their output so high that they're already clipping within themselves. Not to name any names, but um, Silent and Serum, you guys are the worst. And as for Arturia, uh, you just can't make up your mind what level you want each preset to be. Can we all just come together? Maybe we should have a community meeting for all the VST synthesizer creators and decide on a level. Now, I know that those companies want their synths to sound loud and grand as soon as you open them and play a preset, but unfortunately, this is only detrimental to you, the producer or the engineer. So, what do I recommend? Load your preset, play around, do your noodles, whatever it is that you need to do, and then check to see what level the output is on your synthesizer and bring it down. If it's bouncing into the red on your channel meter or on the synthesizer itself, Find the output volume dial or fader and bring it down. Ideally, what we're trying to create here is headroom. We don't want to leave ourselves with too little headroom on our master channel. Otherwise, we're gonna get digital clipping and we just don't want that. We also need to consider making space for other instruments that we may want to add or increase in volume later on in the process. The final source I wanna talk about is loops or audio samples that are pre-recorded or ready-made. Those are also sometimes way, way, way too loud. And it's no good just turning down the volume fader. What you wanna do is you wanna reach for the clip gain, as you'll see here, and just pull that down. Maybe minus 10 dB should do it. You obviously don't have to pull this down if that loop or audio sample is at the right level, but ideally you want to create headroom. So you don't want things too quiet, you don't want things too loud, and that's a balance that you have to find. Do it a hamster, motherfuckers! In fact, a really good way to do it is to find the loudest part of your track, which in electronic music tends to be the kick. Find the kick, bring it down by 10 decibels, see where that's peaking. If it's around minus 12, that's a good place to start, and then mix all your other volumes around that, and never, ever, ever touch the volume of the kick. So, that's input covered. Let's have a look at output. 
Now, when I talk about output, I talk about output after putting a plugin on. And that plugin could be EQ, compression, saturation, any one of those, and many more. This is an issue that I see time and time again. I cannot tell you how many times I've seen it. What tends to happen is someone will compress something or they'll add some sort of fancy distortion plugin. And when they turn the plugin on and off, the signal is at two completely different volumes. Now you tell me, how on earth are you gonna tell what's actually happening to the sound if it's at two completely different volumes? You can't A-B that, it's impossible. So you need to match those volumes and do it by ear. Just because the gain reduction meter on your compressor is saying minus three dB doesn't mean you should boost by three dB. You have to use your ears because it may not be reducing three decibels of the entire signal, especially if you have a slow attack. It's gonna be essentially bypassing those front transients and compressing a little bit later, which means that you're gonna be making everything way too loud. So you want to use the output dial on whichever plugin that you're using or the volume dial to match the volume. So turn the plugin on, turn the plugin off, check that it's the same volume, and if not, change that dial or fader until it is. The idea behind this is that when you A, B something, if it's louder, it's always gonna sound better. So you're always gonna go towards it. Whereas if they're exactly the same volume, you'll be able to be hypercritical about what changes are actually happening to that signal. If you are struggling to match volumes, you can always use a level meter and check. Sometimes this is actually quite useful to do as well. And it will help train your ears towards matching those volumes perfectly. Also, if your plugin doesn't have an output meter, put a gain plugin afterwards and just use that. Group them together, the gain and whatever plugin you're using before that, and make sure you switch them on and off together. I can almost guarantee that your mixing will get better if you gain stage. I promise you, I promise, I promise, I promise, because you're gonna start understanding what changes are happening. And that's really important. You need to understand what's going on. A lot of the times you'll probably be like, oh, this plugin's actually making things sound worse. Maybe I should take it off or change the settings. So just a quick one today, really. A quick one, but on something incredibly important. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. We're going to go in a little bit more detail in other videos, and I'm going to show you exactly how I would balance my volumes in a mix, because I want to help you create headroom on your master bus and get things sounding nice and level. It's been a pleasure as always. Please remember to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you very soon. Peace.